Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 
Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck it in the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty. God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers. Those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. For God himself is judge. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'd like to thank the Subdean, Pat Malloy, my friend, for this gracious invitation to be with you this morning and to break open together the Word of God. Our Gospel reading focuses on the story of the Transfiguration. It's a powerful story and an important story in our life as Christians and in our life as spiritual people. This story of the Transfiguration follows Jesus' foretelling of his suffering, rejection, death, and a resurrection after three days. Jesus foretold his suffering, rejection, death, and eventual resurrection. And so after this experience of teaching his disciples and teaching his friends, we're told that Jesus took with him 
up the mountain, Peter, James, and John. I want you to imagine for a moment that you are included in this experience. What would it be like if you imagine yourself accompanying Jesus up the mountain along with Peter, James, and John? The fact that the story of the transfiguration comes after the foretelling of Jesus's suffering, rejection, death, and resurrection is an important one. As you know, we are living in a time of suffering for so many. We're living in this period of the pandemic, living with sickness and living with death. It is true. Suffering is a part of our reality. And Jesus addressed that because Jesus himself suffered. But because Jesus experienced suffering in and of himself, he invites us as a Christian people to pay attention to the suffering in the world. Who are the people who are suffering because of their race, suffering because of their class, suffering because of their religion, and suffering because of who they are. We're also invited to think of those who are rejected. People who are rejected because they are different. People who are rejected because they are poor. And then we're reminded to remember those who die. Those who die because they're poor, those who die because they are excluded, and those who die because they don't have sufficient resources for the proper health care. In the midst of that teaching, Jesus reminded them of the power of the resurrection. And it is after this teaching on the resurrection that Jesus goes up on the mountain and that Jesus is transfigured before his disciples. In the story of the transfiguration, there appears with Jesus, Elijah and Moses. In the scriptures, Elijah is the one who symbolizes the prophecy of God. And prophecy is all about naming reality. By naming reality, we get a profound sense of God's activity in the world and how God calls us to take our place as the people of God in the world. And so prophets point in many directions. They point to the past. They speak about the present. And they point to the future. And so when we see the presence of Elijah in today's gospel, it calls us to examine the things that we have said about God in the past, the things we are saying about God today, and the legacy that we will leave in terms of what we say about God and what we do in God's name for the future. The presence of Elijah reminds us that we are called to be prophetic people. We are called to be the presence of God. We are called to be the love of God in a powerful way in the world, that we challenge the way things are, and we live into a way of professing a life that can be different. In Moses, Moses is oftentimes associated with the law. 
Again, the presence of Moses invites us to think about the laws we make in our church and in our society. Are these laws just? Do these laws bring life? Do these laws bring the presence of God's love and God's community? There's something fascinating about this story about God's transfiguration in Jesus. The transfiguration for me is an indication that Jesus shows us this non-identifiable nature of God, this mysterious nature of God, this non-binary nature of God. In the story of the transfiguration, Jesus seeks to remind us that we cannot capture God. We cannot keep God within our churches. We cannot keep God within our definitions because God is always the one who goes beyond the ways in which we seek to define God. And so the transfiguration is truly an invitation for us to look at the reality in our world in new and profound ways, to look at our invitation given to us by God to be prophetic and to be a law of love and peace. On December 13th, almost two months ago, Luis Gomez fired shots on the steps of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. And he started firing shots, interestingly enough, right after a Christmas concert. He fired shots and he kept screaming, kill me, kill me. And the police shot him. The bishops, the staff, and the people at the concert demonstrated nothing but care for this young man. And in speaking to his sister, they discovered that he had mental issues and his health had been deteriorating. The cathedral has committed itself to work with the family and to work on behalf of those with mental issues and to work to confront the issue of violence in our society. I mention that because oftentimes in our life, we will be called to address, to address those issues of violence, to stand up for those who are weak and to stand up for those who are most in need of God's mercy. The story of the transfiguration also shows us the confusion of the disciples. And you know, on so many levels, Peter and the disciples, they represent each and every one of us. They did not know what to do. They did not know how to respond. And then we're told that a cloud covered them all. And out of this cloud, came a voice that said, this is my beloved son. Indeed, the transfiguration is an invitation for us to listen deeply for the voice of God, to listen deeply in those moments when we truly don't know what to say, when we truly don't know what to do. Indeed, this is what we're called to do. We are called to respond in love. We are called to be God's beloved, God's presence of hope and peace in this world. 
One of the things that strikes me about the Transfiguration is that all the Gospel writers take special care not to describe exactly what happened. I believe this is an indication for us in the Transfiguration that we can never define God completely, that we can't put God in a tent. And so this Transfiguration shows us that God is truly beyond our definition. God is not a man. God is not a Christian. God is not limited to one finite experience. What would our lives be like if we lived in such a way that we respected this expansive view of God, that we lived into this sense of that God cannot be defined, and that in all of us, we can experience the very presence of God. Later today, the cathedral will unveil a special icon it is Our Lady, Mother of Ferguson, and all those killed by gun violence. It's an image of a black Madonna and her child with their hands in the praying position. And that position is also a reminder of that phrase that comes to us from Ferguson, hands up, don't shoot. The cathedral is finding a way to remind us all to see God in each other. To remind us all that we need to put an end to the culture of suffering. Put an end to the culture of rejection. Put an end to the culture of death. When we live as God's resurrected people, when we live as people of the transfiguration, we see God in each other. We recognize that we are beloved and we hear together and we live together and we celebrate together the voice of God that says to every human being, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter what religion you belong to, no matter the state of your life, you are my beloved and in you I am well pleased. May God bless you. Happy Transfiguration Sunday. Happy Valentine's Day. And never forget, you are God's beloved. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when Joseph and Mary, Jesus' parents, brought in the child Jesus to perform the purification ceremonies for Mary because she had given birth and to offer the child Jesus to God, as was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, manifested your glory in his flesh and sanctified the outward and visible to be a means to perceive realities unseen. Accept, we pray, this representation of him enthroned in his mother's womb, targeted by our bigotry, wounded by our transgressions, and grant that as we look upon it, our hearts may be drawn to things which can be seen only by the eye of faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Incarnate Son. Grant that we, who have been redeemed by his blood, may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We bless your name, O Lord, because it has pleased you to enable your servant Mark, a priest in your church, and Catherine, his spouse, to offer this gift for your worship. Remember them for good, and grant that all who benefit from this gift may show their thankfulness to you by using it in accordance with your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and episodic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Anglican Church of Canada, remembered today throughout the communion. With the other Episcopalians in the Diocese of New York, let us pray for the Church of the Transfiguration, the little church around the corner here in Manhattan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray too for Trinity Church Wall Street, especially their minister at Trinity Retreat Center in Connecticut, and for Father Mark Bozudi Jones, who oversees it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for everyone suffering because of the COVID-19 crisis. We pray this week, especially for the students and teachers whose work together has been so disrupted and for the families who struggle to balance childcare, nutrition, and employment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are seeking to be vaccinated and the staffs of the vaccination centers and those who seek to be tested and the staffs of the testing centers. We pray especially for those who will come to the cathedral in the days ahead to be tested and for the medical professionals who will take care of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the nations of the world and their leaders. This week, we beg God to inspire the members of our Senate as they continue the trial of Donald Trump. We pray for civility and impartiality, for dignity and fairness, for healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us be mindful of those in need or trouble. We have been asked today to pray for Luis Rivera Rivera, deacon, for Margaret Groak and Karen Garcia, for Vilma Brewster and Ariel Duarte, for River Lee Queen and Bill Randolph, for Laura Betts, Cedric Armstrong, and Laura Friesemann. Let us bring to our minds and hearts and lips the names of others in want or distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks for the good gifts life bestows upon us. We pray as always for our benefactors, 
and we pray God to inspire others to generosity. This week, we give thanks that our cathedral will soon be used for COVID testing, and we give thanks for every visitor it will bring to us. For what else should we give thanks today? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the eternal rest and the glorious resurrection of all who have died. Our prayers have been asked this week for Walter Brewster, Erica Rohrbach, and Panagiotis Nicolopoulos. For members of the Rochino family, Leticia, Diascoro, and Lawrence. Let us entrust to God's power and mercy others among the dead we miss and mourn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. And as we go, may the blessing, the love, the justice, and the peace of the Holy One who is in the midst of us be among us and remain with us always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. As you might know, the cathedral's operating budget, like that of so many institutions, has suffered under the gathering restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we have made it a priority to retain our staff and to maintain the important work of Cathedral Community Cares in our humble attempt to walk in the way of love. In the spirit of that same humility and love, if you find that you would like to join us in sustaining this ministry, please head to stjohndivine.org slash donate or click on the link in the video description. We thank you for your support, for joining us in worship and being a part of our online community. And we pray that you will continue to pray with us and walk with us as we dream of a brighter day.